overflows. Love, the ecstasy of awakening. Love is the ecstasy of awakening. Putting all your logic and conditionings aside, place yourself completely in my hands, meaning in the hands of the divine energy. Feel a subtle presence surrounding you. My presence is catalytic in many ways. Things will happen faster in such presence. Mystical, mysterious and unbelievable will start happening in this presence. The important thing is my energy that surrounds you as a subtle presence. When you allow this energy to flow in you, your chemistry will change. When you allow this energy to flow in you, your chemistry will change. And when chemistry changes, your experience of life too changes. Miss, when chemistry changes, your experience of life too changes mysteriously and you will be madly ecstatic and utterly blissful. Love is blessing. The only blessing that one needs to overflow love or to be the effulgence of love. Know this as ecstasy of inner flowering or awakening. Love is blessing. The only blessing one needs to overflow love or to be the effulgence of love. Know this as ecstasy of inner flowering or awakening. Life should be taken with ease. Differences are not contradictions. They can help each other and immensely enhance each other. The woman who loves you can enhance your creativity. She can inspire you to heights you have never dreamed of and she asks nothing. She simply wants your love, which is her basic right. When you look through the eyes of logic, you will know a few things, but when you look When you look through the eyes of logic, you will know only few things, but those few things will not give you the vision of reality. They will only be abstractions. When you look through love, then you know the reality as it is. Love is falling with universe. Love is falling with the universe together, falling in a togetherness, it is orgasmic. You are streaming and existence has always been streaming and now both streamings meet and mingle and are infused in each other. A higher synthesis arises, the part is meeting in the whole and the whole is meeting in the part. Then something arises which is more than the part and the whole together. That is what love is. Love is one of the most significant words of human languages because love is existential language. Remember, this is one of my basic insights in life. There are no contradictions. All contradictions are complementary. Night is complementary to day. So is summer to winter. So is death to life. They are not against each other. There is nothing against anything because there is only one energy. It is one existence. My left hand and my right hand are not against one another. They are complementary. They are working on one energy. Opposites are just like wings of a bird. Two wings. They look opposite to each other, but they support each other. The bird cannot fly with one wings. You cannot walk with two feet. Both are part of synergistic harmony. Tantra and Tao 
have to be experimented together. Now, yoga has a great insight into discipline and Tao has a great insight into spontaneity. They are opposites on the surface, but unless your discipline makes you spontaneous and unless your spontaneity makes you disciplined, you are not whole. Remember, they look opposites on the surface, but unless your discipline makes you more spontaneous and unless your spontaneity makes you more disciplined, you are not whole. Yoga is control, Tantra is no control, both are needed. A man has to be so capable of order that if need arises, he can function in utter order. But order should not become a fixation, otherwise he will become a robot. He should be able to come out of his system, his discipline, whenever the need arises and he can be spontaneous, flowing in a let go. That he can get only through Tantra from nowhere else. Life is the process of bringing all the opposites together as harmony. Life is the process of bringing all the opposites together as harmony. Live these as complementaries. Yogis will be against me because they cannot see how sex and love can be part of seekers' life. There is a deep harmony between the two. The flower cannot be the soil, but the flower cannot blossom without soil. For flower to blossom, soil is necessary, a fertilized soil. Sex provides the soil for flower of love to blossom. But this soil needs to be fertilized in a proper manner. It has to have the proper system in order for the nourishment to reach the flower that love is and that needs to be blossomed. Because neither your soil is fertilized nor the, the system of providing the nourishment is released, is free, it is blocked. As a result, the flower blossoms crooked. It does not blossom in its full splendor. And that is what love is. They cannot understand how sex and love can be part of seekers' life. They are afraid. They are afraid of sex because sex is the most spontaneous thing in your life. It has to be controlled, but it is the soil that provides that can only the soil be nourished and the nourishment reaches the plant through the capillary system of the plant and all the nourishment dissolved in the water, the energy it reaches the flower. Then the flower blossoms. They are afraid of sex because sex is the most spontaneous thing in your life. It has to be controlled. They know once sex is controlled, everything else is controlled. So their basic attack is on sex. And Tantra says, if your sex is not spontaneous, your whole life will become robot-like. And that is what we see all around. It has to be in freedom. Both are right and both are together. Therefore, it is my approach. This will look absent because entire approach is very illogical. Logic is always, logic always insists either be a yogi or be a tantrika. And life indeed is the merging of opposites, day and night, merge into one another to become a complete 24 hours. 
logic will always insist either be a yogi or be a tantrika believe in life trust in life life is harmony life is balance between opposites remember life is both together life is both together a balance between opposites and up and down